Alright, so TypeScript is a bit like a toxic girlfriend. So let's start off with creating our first TypeScript file. And we can go through some of the beginner techniques. And you can see here that the type on the left is automatically inferred as a string because it's a variable, it can change. So definitely it will be some kind of string as inferred by TypeScript. When we use the keyword const, because the variable can't change at all, then it automatically infers the type as the exact string that was provided. We can overcome this by just specifying the exact type that we are going to use. For example, if var3 is going to be a string. So when we put the colon, then TypeScript says, okay, this is exactly the type. So you can define the schema of an object, something like this. And what's happening here is that when you define a variable with the type user, then it must have a name and it must have a name. So TypeScript starts off very sweet and it solves problems like, you see, I made a mistake just now and it automatically corrected that for me. So for example, if I make another mistake and we want to ignore the mistake, then we can simply use tsignore. So now we have our first TypeScript file, but it's no use if you can't really run it. So for us to be able to run TypeScript, we need to compile it down to JavaScript. And the way we do that is with TSC. To run TSC, we need a tsconfig file, which we can get with TSC init. So this config file specifies certain rules on how the TypeScript should be compiled to JavaScript. So we can just run TSC again. And from the index.ts, you see that it has created our index.js. So this is essentially the JavaScript version of whatever we are writing in TypeScript. So now we can move on to how functions are defined in TypeScript. When defining a function, you can define the type of the arguments being used as well as the output type. So as you can see, when I specify the output type as number, then it shows an error because it expects us to return a number. For example, if you return the user's age, it detects no error because a user's age is definitely a number. We can also define functions that don't return anything. And we can do this by specifying the output type as void. So now if you return something, it shows an error. But TypeScript is really smart. It can actually determine what type you're returning straight away. So when I hover over it, it tells us that the return type is void. But if I put in a return, then it tells us that straight away, the return type is a number. Or we do something like this, TypeScript will even be able to tell that the return type is either of type 23 or type hello. So in TypeScript, there's this solve all problems type called the any type. But when you use the any type, you're opting out of TypeScript's type checking, which is the whole point of TypeScript, correct? You catch your mistakes before they go to production code. The thing about any is you can assign any variable to it. And something like this is definitely going to break in production because you expect variable seven to be a number, but because you use any, you are just assigning it as whatever you want. So how do we solve this problem with any? Well, there's another type in TypeScript called unknown. And unknown is like the type safe version of any. So as you can see, you can assign any type of variable to the type unknown. For example, a string or maybe even a number. But the whole point of unknown is you can't assign it to any other variable without specifically telling TypeScript what type it is first. So to do the types casting, we can just type as and then the type we wanted to cast it to. And TypeScript will automatically assign that as the new type of the variable. So when it comes to arrays, how do we specify the type of values that go into an array? Well, we can do it something like this. So for example, all values that are in this var10 must be strings. Otherwise, it will throw an error. We can also specify like an interface or like a whole object schema within that array. So every value inside this array now needs to be in an object. And not only that, it must have that property name. As you can see, this works. But something like this doesn't work because it doesn't follow the required interface of name string. So now we can move on to more intermediate things. For example, types. So what's the difference between interface and types? So let's say you want to specify a uh, user status and it can take on any three values ready not ready or in progress so you can see this is not something we can do with an interface because it shows a whole bunch of errors but you can do it with a type which is weird because types and interfaces are nearly the same in a lot of other things for example this would work but i don't know why they have to make it separate for the type they probably made it like that just to confuse beginner developers and so that the folks at microsoft can have a good laugh at themselves so let's say we have a variable of type status one then it can take on any of the three types the great thing about typescript is it automatically helps you fill in the blanks so as you can see it gives us the three available values and you notice there's this type operator and this allows you to specify that it can be either of type a or type b for example if you want a type of string or array you can specify as a string or an array of strings. So maybe you accept an input, which is a type of a string or a type of an array of strings, and you want to just coerce it to an array of strings. So if the input is a string, we just want to wrap it so that we have a consistent output of an array of strings. So if you notice here, what we are using is a predicate, which is just a fancy way of saying true or false. So let's say you create an if block, and this if block checks if the input is of type string. What happens is this narrows the input type. So as you see, when we hover over the input, it is of type string within this block. So we can see what input is outside of the block. Because if it was in the if block, 
it will have already written as type string. So outside of the if block, it will be an array of strings. So another type to introduce to you is the type never, and it is a type that will never happen. So as you can see, status2 is both a type string and a type number, but this could never happen. Strings and numbers don't overlap. So this also introduces the idea of the and operator. So for a type to fulfill this, it must be both the type on the left and the type on the right. Now we like to introduce optional variables. So perhaps we want to save our users, but they don't always have to provide their age. So if we don't want them to always provide their age, we can always put a question mark. And what this means is that that property is optional. So as you can see, we can specify this user without even specifying the age, but we can put in the age if we want to. So when we obtain an optional value, it's either undefined or the type of the value itself. But if you want to tell TypeScript that, hey, this variable is definitely defined, then what we can do is just provide an exclamation mark. Then TypeScript will back off and say, okay, okay, it's defined, man, calm down. So the thing about TypeScript is it comes with some utility types. For example, if you want to make all the properties in an interface required, and now with this new required type, you have to specify all the properties. You have to specify the name and the age. And if you want to make all the properties optional, then what we can do is just use the utility type partial. So as you can see here, we don't even need to specify the name or the age. Okay, maybe that's cool and all, but maybe for an object you want to specify, for every single key, you must have a particular type. We can do this by creating a new interface and specifying the type of the key, as well as the exact type of the value provided. So when we do this, now when we specify an object of that type, now for every key, which is of type string, it must have that type of value. So now we move on to the pro section where things start to get a bit tricky, but it's still manageable. So we'll start off with generics. So what are generics? So do you remember back when we were assigning arrays and there were the things in the angle brackets? So the value inside that angle bracket is the generic type. So let's do the hello world of generics. So maybe we can have a simple example for generics where we want to cast the type of an object. Our cast the type function takes in a type t and it can take in any type of object. And what it does is it returns the object but as the type t. So now that we have this function, we can just use this specify the type that we want to cast to, and then whatever variable that we want to cast to that type. So as you can see, even though the input is 23, the output is of type string because we managed to cast it to type string by specifying the generic type. So as you notice in the above example, we have to specify specifically what is the type that is going in, but we can also do type inference. For example, even though we specify the generic type as T, because object one is of type t, whenever we put in the argument, it automatically determines the type that was inputted. So as you can see, when we mouse over it, it detected that object one is a number. So the generic type is auto inferred as a number. So let's say we change the type of our one, then automatically it updates and figures out, okay, I'm of type string now. So you might be thinking, okay, this return self example is pretty useless, right? But let me give you a more realistic example. For example, we want to create an array from two objects. So with a function like this, what it ensures is that object one and object two, both of the parameters inputted are of the same type. Otherwise it doesn't let you create your array. So now we move on to type predicates. So previously we had the example where we use an if else to determine the type, but sometimes you might have two interfaces that are just not distinct. For example, something like this, where the young user's age is below 50 and the old user's age is above 50 and you don't really know what's the difference. So we can create our own predicate to check whether the user is old or young. And it accepts an argument of either an old or young user. And if the user's age is above 50, then he'll be an old user. So let's say we have a new user. His name is Robertson and he's 51 years old. So right now, if we define a user like this, within that bracket, TypeScript doesn't know whether it's an old or a new user. But what we can do is specify that our output type of the predicate specifies whether the user is old. Now that we do that, TypeScript understands that this function is to determine whether a user is old or young. And now within the if block, TypeScript detects correctly that the user is old. So for those of us who have been using TypeScript for quite some time, I'm sure you've run into the problem where you import some library, TypeScript is going great, and then suddenly you realize that you need to add something and the original library doesn't support that type, which is extremely frustrating. So we can give an example of a library that we import, which has a small interface. Maybe it only specifies variable one and two. So let's say we import the library and we want to use the type in our code. So let's say we really want to define variable three on this interface, but what we can do with TypeScript is extend the module decoration. And within this extended module decoration, we can say that, hey, actually small interface does have variable tree. And with this type extension, now TypeScript understands that, oh, okay, you want to add this type 
to this library that you cannot edit because it's perhaps an npm package that you imported and allows you to add variable tree to the value. You can also create types from types in TypeScript. For example, if you have a type point which has an x and y coordinate and you want to get a type of keys within the point, which is either x or y, you can create this type just by getting the key of the type. So this new type p that we have created can only take on the value of x or y. So maybe we want to get all the different types of values that can be assigned within the point. Perhaps it's not just numbers, perhaps the type of y is actually a string. So another thing is we can get the type of the value by the key. For example, the type of the property x in point is of a type number. So maybe we want to get all the possible types of values that can be assigned to the keys of the type point. What we can do is the same thing as above, but instead of just for the property x, we get it for all of the key of the points. So as you can see, all the possible types of values that can be assigned to the keys of point are numbers and strings. So to summarize, basically key of gives you the types of all the keys of a particular object. And the next thing we're gonna look at is conditional types. So conditional types allows you to create a new type based on an existing type depending on certain factors. So let's give an example of a type that checks whether something is a string or not. So this type accepts a generic and we want to check if this generic extends the type string. Not the type string but rather just the string string whether t is the string string. And we want to make it so that the final type is string if the input is the string string. Otherwise it can be anything. So maybe we can better understand what this check string type does. So let's say I pass in the type anything to it. So what does this do? Well, the type anything does not extend string. So it will allow any type to be assigned to it. So as you can see, the output is of type any. So now in this case, let's put in the type string as in literally the string string. So because T does extend the type of string string, then it would only allow you to assign something of type string to it. So this is how conditional types work. Like you don't have to actually put in the type string here. And if you did that, uh, because string does not extend the type string, it would allow type any. So the conditional allows you to create new types based on what the existing type is and then essentially create if else statements. So to recap, this section here is the condition. Does T extend string? If t does extend string, then the type will be the first value. And if t does not extend string, then the type will be the second value. That's cool and all, but if you want to build your MVP faster, you can check out Easy Backend. Also, there's a lot more that I haven't covered about TypeScript, like template literal types and type inference. So if you want to know more about these topics, you can follow our channel and we'll post a video about these topics soon.